Five years on the market seems kind of short, right? Well, not in the tech space and certainly not in the console gaming market. There is news of a canceled Switch Pro, as we fans like to call it. The Apparently, the OLED model was scrapped in favor of a successor to Switch or, or, or a new or a Switch 2. So why is this? Is this because of the chip shortage? Maybe. Regardless, we kind of know what Nintendo appears to be going for. And I wanted to discuss the pros and cons of a successor to Switch as opposed to a beefier Switch Pro, as we fans like to call it. Stick around to find out what you all voted on as far as what you really want from Nintendo, either a Switch Pro or a Switch 2. You guys have spoken. Nintendo re is really known for their pioneering innovation. The NES system revolutionized console gaming in 1987. Before home consoles, we all used to go out to arcades and pachinko machines and, qu and use, use quarters and all that stuff. Nintendo kind of popularized gaming at home. The Nintendo 64 introduced the thumbstick with a 360 degree playing area. The Wii introduced motion control and got new people into gaming. The Switch provided a AAA experience and indie and indie gaming experience on the go as well as on the TV. So you have different options. If you want to count the DS as a console, then that introduced two screens as well as 3D aspects of portable gaming. With the rumored news of this Switch 2 on the horizon, I think there are pros and cons to a brand new successor to the Switch as opposed to refreshing the current model. Nintendo seems to thrive off their Blue Ocean strategy. Nintendo 64 grew a larger audience of first-person shooters with go with the games such as GoldenEye or Perfect Dark. That is, if you're if you were not playing Doom on the PC, we got new people into gaming such as your grandparents. The Switch more or less allowed you to play in between things. Take work, for example. You, on, on your lunch break, you were able to, if you have a break room area, you were able to get with your friends and play a quick round of Mario Kart, Super Smash Bros., or, or Monster Hunter. I know people who do this, and they are awesome for it. Whereas other console makers focus on the current audiences by upgrading their performance of their current systems, getting them closer and closer to a, a PC level of gaming. Just look at where we're at with the PS5 and Xbox One. Both of those consoles are very close to PCs. So whereas Sony and Microsoft focus on their current customers, Nintendo tries to create a whole new type of gamer. Nintendo's innovation has somewhat of a high risk, high reward strategy and vice versa. If you if you look at the Nintendo 3DS and the Wii and the Switch, they're all on the top selling consoles of all time. But there are some flops. And no, I don't mean teraflops, I do mean flops. How well do Nintendo 64's controllers hold up today? Not very well, right? And speaking of that, where is GoldenEye, Nintendo? I really want to know. The GameCube, which unfortunately is my all-time favorite Nintendo console, and the Wii U can be considered flops by Nintendo because these these guys did not do well in sales compared to their compared to their competitors at that time. GameCube you might consider a flop because of it having a lack of innovation that held it back from being able to compete with the powerhouse that was the PS2. Many people back in the day bought a PS2 as a DVD player and had the option of gaming on the side. So that was kind of a innovative approach at the time. The Wii U was innovative, but unfortunately it released in 2012, which was three years after the iPad and other tablets released. Looking at Nintendo's history, it, it kind of appears as though every other console for Nintendo has 
really succeeded and then and then on the other other generation of nintendo consoles it looks like those kind of more or less flop the big question is is nintendo's next console that it releases in whatever it is 2024 2025 is that going to flop well we'll see Nintendo can be seen as a trendsetter. Since 2007, every console has really tried something new. We've gotten a portable console that you can play maybe 360 PS3 level of third-party titles and maybe somewhere in between that and PS4 or Xbox One level of first-party games on the Switch. The creative minds at Nintendo for certainly have the ability to disrupt the entire market again with a new Nintendo console. We all know Nintendo we all have, know the saying Nintendo is going to Nintendo. Sometimes that means a good thing, sometimes that means a bad thing. Really what it means is there's really no predicting what Nintendo is going to do. But it has an existing fan base that has one of the highest grossing, highest selling consoles of all time. Remember in 2017 when you couldn't get a Switch because they didn't stock enough because they didn't anticipate it being such a hot seller? Well, the Switch as it sits right now at the recording of this video sits directly behind PS4 as the fifth highest selling console of all time. And that's a pretty big feat if you ask me. While I think it would be a great idea to move forward and innovate, you you also cannot leave behind the existing fan base which of people that love the Switch. If Nintendo were to take the approach of refreshing the Switch as a more powerful mobile gaming device, kind of in the direction like the Steam Deck did, I think we would need to prepare ourselves for two things. First, the battery, and second, the cost. Do you have a Steam Deck? How long does the battery last you in portable mode if you play it straight through? I don't personally own one of these one of these devices yet, but I've been hearing that the battery does not last longer than two hours. Feel free to correct me in the comments if yours lasts longer than that. It probably depends on the game you play. If you're a busy gamer, like you are, like the people who watch this channel, the Datamer, then this battery life matters, but not as but not as much because we play in shorter spurts of time, unless we have a dedicated night for putting a lot of gaming session in. So any new hardware from Nintendo would really have to balance power and cost. Does better performance in a game system mean that it's going to cost more? Probably. Take a look at the Steam Deck. This thing starts at $400 and it gets you the bare minimum. The new Nintendo hardware in order to compete, even though I say compete even though these the Steam Deck and the Switch are not exactly direct competitors, but when you look at the Switch and you take a competitive analysis, you're going to have to look at the PS5, the Xbox, the Steam Deck, even the MetaQuest, and consider all the things that these competitors are, are doing, and you're going to have to do something different to stand out. So could we see from Nintendo a four to $500 portable gaming device? I don't think it's out of the realm of possibilities. I do think that as much as Nintendo do, does want to save money, I think that would kind of hurt them. I think with the current market we have with with everything now, I think Nintendo putting out a $500 powerful console enough to handle a lot, I think would be pretty reasonable with everything else going on. Really, is, is Nintendo just going to follow the trends with just making a more powerful console alone, I think it's going to require at least some innovation 
in its strategy for a, for a new system. A few days ago, I asked you, would you rather have a Nintendo Switch 2 or a refreshed Switch every couple of years? Thank you, RGT, for that suggestion. 65% of you said you wanted a Switch 2. Follow-up question to that. Do you think Nintendo will innovate again or, or follow the trend of higher performance? At some level, it's going to need to have a minimum HD requirement because you, you can't follow you can't fall too far behind so regardless of what Nintendo does the next bit of hardware that comes out I think we definitely should expect a higher cost but what do you think of the price of everything should should it should it, should it be a surprise that we have a more expensive Nintendo console also what are you expecting from a Nintendo Switch 2? Let me know down in the comments below. What do you think Nintendo's gonna do? Are they going to are they gonna innovate? Are they gonna are they going to beef it up? Let me let me know what you want and let me know what you think Nintendo's like really gonna do here. Because what we're working on is rumor and we don't exactly have anything 100 percent confirmed. Let's talk down in the comments below, and until the next one, go make sure to spend time with your family, go waste that next test, and make sure you throw touchdowns before you play Call of Duty. I'll see you on the next one.